Hello, in this lesson we're going to take a look at some problems. To get the most out of this, you should have a pen, paper and calculator. When I've been through the problem, you can pause the video, try the problem for yourself, and then I'll go over the solution. There's a range of formula and topics we need to know about to do circuit calculations, and if you look through this toolkit of useful equations and rules. I hope you recognize most of them. Pause the video and read the list carefully. The ones in yellow are the particularly important ones, but they're all very useful and you should be familiar with all of them. Let's start with a basic non-calculation problem. On the top left we've got the characteristic curve of a diode. So the above shows a characteristic or IV curve for a diode. Sketch the graph of the diode's resistance against voltage. That's the top right, the axes have been drawn. The resistance isn't constant, it varies. What's the graph of resistant vers resistance versus voltage look like? Pause the video, think about it, try it for yourself. And you should have something that looks like this. In the middle bit, the resistance is fairly high. We can tell that because the current isn't increasing much as the voltage gets bigger. That's fairly flat. It's a large resistance value. However, at the left and right side, the current suddenly starts getting much bigger for a small increase in voltage. That means the resistance must be dropping. That's why the graph drops off at the left and the right side. Notice the graph doesn't touch the horizontal axis. The resistance doesn't drop to zero. That would imply the graph on the left went and showed infinite currents on the left and right hand side. The resistance doesn't get to zero. Hope that makes sense. Let's move on. Here's a simple circuit. 6 volt EMF cell a diode in series with a resistor and another resistor. You're told the voltage across the diode is 0 0.7 volts. Look at the circuit. You've got two tasks. First task is find the voltages across and the currents through each resistor. So what's the voltage and current for the 4 ohm resistor? What's the voltage and current for the 3 ohm resistor? And then find the power output of the cell. Pause the video have a go. Okay, <coughs> excuse me, let me go through my answer. Let's do the 3 ohm resistor first, that's the easiest one to start with. If we go around the outer loop of the circuit and use Kirchhoff's second law, then we can tell that the voltage or the potential difference across that resistor is the EMF, 6 volts, Kirchhoff's second law. So for the 3 ohm resistor, V is 6.0 volts, the current through it is given by V over R, which is 6.0 volts over 3.0 ohms. 2.0 amps is the answer. Don't write the answer as 2 amps. The data you've used is two significant figures, 6.0 and 3.0. So the best answer is 2.0 amps. Let's do the, the inner loop and work out the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor. We know from Kirchhoff's second law that 0.7 and the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor must add up to 6, the EMF. So the voltage across 4 ohm resistor is simply 6 minus 0.7, it's 5.3. So for the 4 ohm resistor, the voltage across it is 5.3 volts. The current through it will be V over R, 5.3 volts over 4.0 ohms, 1.325 amps rounded to two significant figures, 1.3 amps. We need the power, finally, power output of the cell. The power will be given by, well we could use IV if it's a resistor, power is I times V. For the cell we use I times EMF, IE. If you understand EMF then you'll see that the power can be given by I times the EMF of the cell, that's the power output of the cell. We don't know the current through the cell, but we do know the two separate currents that we've just worked out. The current through the cell is going to split into two. One part is 2 amps, the other part is 
325 amps. So the total will be just those two separate currents added together. That will be the current that goes through the cell. So the power is current times EMF. The current is 2 plus 1.325 using the unrounded value. So that will be 3.325 and we'll multiply that by the EMF 6.0. And 20 watts is the answer. Don't forget the unit. Let's do another one. This is a fairly common question in exams or questions similar to this are quite common. Here's a 3 volt cell. Here's a light emitting diode in series with a resistor R. This light emitting diode LED operates at the required brightness when the voltage or PD across it is 1.0 volts. And the question is what value resistor is needed? That cell provides 3 volts but the diode only needs one volt to cross it. So what value of resistance will give that? And to help us, here's part of the diode's characteristic curve that you can use when you answer the question. So pause the video, try this one. Okay, let's go over it. First of all, we know we want one volt to cross the diode. That means, using Kirchhoff's second law, that 2 volts must be the voltage across the resistor R, because they add up to 3. So it's 3 minus 1, 2 volts. So that's the first part. The voltage across resistor R is 3 minus 1, it's 2 volts. Do we know the current through resistor R? Yes, we do. For, for the diode, we know when there's 1 volt across it, which is what we want, there's a current of 5 milliamps through it. The diode and resistor are in series, so the 5 milliamps through the diode means there's 5 milliamps through the resistor. So I know that I is 5 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. 10 to the minus 3 is milli. The rest is easy. Resistance is voltage over current. It's 2.0 volts over 5 milliamps, and it's 400 ohms. That's the value of the resistor we need. Okay, one final and slightly harder question. Here's the circuit. Take a look carefully. You have got to find the voltage across and the current through the 20 kilo ohm resistor. That's the middle of those three on the right. What is the voltage across that resistor? What is the current through it? Pause the video. Have a go. I hope you've had a go. Let me redraw the circuit just to point something out. Those three resistors on the right are in parallel. If I draw them like this, which is completely equivalent to the first circuit, it's easier to see. And it reminds us that they have the same voltage across them. And that any current that comes in splits three ways. So let's proceed. Let's go back to our original circuit. The first part is to work out the resistance of those three resistors in parallel. And we use the standard formula, 1 over the total is 1 over the first plus 1 over the second plus 1 over the third. Working in kilo ohms, that will be 1 over 10 plus 1 over 20 plus 1 over 30. If you want to work in fractions, you can. That would be 60th. That would be uh, 6 60th plus 3 60th plus 2 60th. But if you want to work in decimals, let's do that. 1 over 10 is 0 0.1, 1 over 20 is 0 0.05, 1 over 30 is 0 0.03 recurring, which I'll write as that some extra decimal places. Add them up, 0.1833. That's 1 over the total resistance. To get the total resistance, we take 1 divided by 0.1833, and it comes to four, sorry, 5.45 kilo ohms. So that's the resistance of those three resistors, 5.45 kilo ohms. Now, there's two ways we can continue from that. I'll call the first method one. I'll go through that. Then I'll show you another method, method two. Let's do method one. What we've got is this circuit, 5 kilo ohms and 5.45 kilo ohms in series with the cell. Because 5.45 is equivalent to those three that I've drawn separately on the right hand side. 
We know the total resistance of this circuit, they're in series 5 and 5.45, the total resistance is 10.45 kilo ohms. I can now work out the current through this circuit. I is the EMF over the total resistance. It's 3.0 over 10.45 times 10 to the 3, that's kilo thousand comes to 2.87 times 10 to the minus 4 amps. Now I can work out the PD across this resistor, 5.45 kilo ohms. That is important because that voltage, that potential difference, is the voltage that's across the three resistors shown on the right. That middle one, one of the questions was, what's the voltage across it? Well, the voltage across it is the same as the voltage across the 5.45 kilo ohm resistor. So let's work that out. PD across 5.45 kilo ohms is, use V equals IR. I, we've just worked out, 2.87, 10 to the minus 4 amps. And R is 5450, 5450. That comes to 1. 5, 6 volts. I've rounded that to 1.6 volts. Two significant figures. That is the answer to what's the voltage across a 20 kilo ohm resistor because the resistor which is equivalent to the three parallel ones has the same voltage as the three parallel ones have. And what is the current through the 20 kilo ohm resistor which is the last part? And the answer is let's use I is V over R. The voltage across it I'll use 1.56, the unrounded value, not 1.6. 1.56 is the voltage, divide it by the resistance, and that's 20,000 ohms. So that's the voltage and current worked out. The final answer, 7.8 times 10 to the minus 5 amps. Simply worked out voltage over resistance for that middle resistor to get the current through it. That was method one. As a quicker method, we've got as far as this, the combined resistance of the three in parallel is 5.45 kilo ohms. Method two uses the potential divider formula. To get the voltage across the 5.45 kilo ohm resistor, it's simply the total voltage applied, which is three, times this fraction, 5.45 over the total, which is five, plus 5.45. That's the potential divider formula. The two resistors form a potential divider. And it comes to 1.56 volts, rounded 1.6 volts. And the last part we do just the same as we did in method one. The current through the 20 kilo ohm resistor is the voltage across it divided by its resistance. It's 1.56 volts divided by 20,000 ohms. 7.8 times 10 to the minus 5 amps. If you multiply that by 10 to the 6, you turn it to microamps. That would be 78 microamps, which is a neater answer, perhaps. OK, those are some typical examples of circuit problems. Get things like that in exams. Thanks for watching.